Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Washington Commanders fans, whenever, wherever you're listening to this. This is the Command This Podcast. We're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming preseason game Monday night between the Baltimore Ravens and your Washington Commanders. And uh, now that I've passed the point where YouTube will automatically demonetize me for shocking or offensive content, guess what? Hey, Mark Andrews, use a baby back bitch! Drop that beat. And you never pay for drugs, not even once. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is August 20th, Sunday. This is a pre-recorded offline Ravens Commanders preseason game preview that your boys are kicking out here. Um, Sunday evening, we got the game tomorrow night. It is our second preseason game, so we're starting to get back into the swing of things getting into the regular nfl season that was your boy phil on the intro and dev coming in right behind him pause and i'm your boy steve we are command this thank you for tuning in to another episode all music is done by dev for a disclaimer the man is super talented please go follow his spotify it will be in the description of this video in youtube so please go check it out this is episode 211 for command this and we're going into the second preseason game against Baltimore. And the game is going to be at FedEx Field. It's kind of cool that this is a thing every year. I don't know how many years in a row this is happening, but the Battle of the Beltway, it's here. It's it's it's, it's part of our tradition now. So good, bad, and different. I, I kind of like it. I mean, the, Jets, the Giants do it every, every preseason. Yeah. So why not? Yeah, and I, I, I guess it alternates back and forth. So I'm guessing last year must have been in Baltimore. This year's at FedEx. I will not be going. I will be taking my family on Saturday to the Bengals game, uh, also at FedEx. So we had our first game in Cleveland and our last two preseason games at FedEx Field. So should be a good time. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, I'll drop the card. It'll be somewhere around here by, by my head or Phil's head. Uh, I did get to attend the Joint Ravens practice, the second day of Joint Ravens practice at Owings Mills on one winning drive. Last week, pretty cool. If you haven't seen the vlog, please go check it out. Uh, it was pretty dope. I will say the facilities are nice, very nice. I hope Ashburn or whoever can, can um, you know, not be exactly like that, but to have a nice big – their office buildings are right on the practice field. I'm guessing you know, those are the office buildings. I have no idea. I'm, I don't know if that's where their corporate headquarters are for the team, whatever. But it's they super are. nice. That, that is where they keep them. It's a yeah. lot like it, it's. Honestly, I think the Redskins Park, when it was initially set up, kind of became the model for how other teams set up their practice facilities and corporate offices. A lot of yeah. times they used to do it in the stadium, and then we opened up Redskins Park. And a lot of other teams start opening up facilities like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they wouldn't allow live footage. I tried so hard to get live footage and I got caught three times with my phone. I mean, you couldn't, the second you pulled your phone out of your pocket, this red shirt administrator was like, ah, put it away. No, no, put it away. So it, it was a big big pain in the ass but i got a lot of footage post practice a lot of players giving us daps i actually got the dap up cam curl which was pretty cool um saw dax milne saw pretty much everyone it was it was a good times the players looked good the plastic wall where kids were signing autographs after the game collapsed and it reminded me of the fedex field collapsing the uh, gates collapsing on uh, jalen hurts last year it's kind of funny but yeah, good insights, not a lot of live footage. Uh, but going back to Phil's opening comment about Mark Andrews. So he slammed, if you remember on day one, he slammed Danny Johnson into the ground. And it turns out, I think he tore his rotator cuff, which is pretty messed up. And there, 
if you do something like that in practice, shouldn't you get fined or something if you do it in the game? It's kind of kind of fucked up, if you ask me. I mean, I mean it's just practice. And nothing practice. happens. Now we lost the defensive back because of it. Practice? We talking about practice? Not talking about practice? Not the yeah. game. Look, I can tell you, I can tell you a couple things. One, I want and this is this is a store, this tags into to tomorrow's game. They are pretty much holding out all their starters. Preach. Yeah. From this game. Now, some may say, oh, it's because they want to save them for the for the regular season or whatever. No. It's to give cover for why Andrews isn't going to play. Because he would be a marked man. You think it's all back to Andrews? I, I really so. do. Because they didn't make that announcement until right after that practice. Then yeah. they announced it. They knew. They knew. Yeah. That they, they knew. They put him out there. His knees, his neck, his, whatever. His ankles are all targets. All right. Yeah. Major League Baseball style. Yeah. What, do you, what does a pitcher do when you hit a boy? He hits you back. No question. You may, your pitcher may get tossed. He may get fined. Oh, well. Retribution. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, and this is where I go back to Mark Andrews is a baby back bitch. See, when I was when I, in, in high school, our center literally got punched square in the cup by a defensive tackle from a rival school. Yeah. Literally, just the guy just went up and just uppercut him square in the cup blatantly on a run play. He comes out. So, you know, he's got to take a breather. I mean, <laughs> he's nuts punched. I don't care if you're wearing a cup. If someone just uppercuts you in a cup, that's just jamming that thing right up into your jaw. It's still going to hurt. It's still going to hurt. It's still going to hurt. So, the next run play we had up the middle, Adam. Where we ran a double team. Right at him. Double teamed right at him. And in the pile, lineman grabbed the guy's ankles and started Kurt angling, length ankle locking him both legs. Yeesh. And he's in a pile. He can't get out. Yeah, he's done. All you heard was the you whistle blow done. at the same time. This kid's screaming for his life. Ugh. No more cut punches after that. Ugh. Let me tell you that. But you see, that to me is a fair way of doing things because the cut punch at least happened during a play. <laughs> the ankle locks happened yeah. during a play. Yeah, There was no blindsiding someone after the whistle blew and there's no contact engagement going on whatsoever oh my gosh and and just, just when, when, when i can sit there and say that a dude punching another dude in the cup is a more respectable cheap shot than 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 what he did that's yeah. something but you know that retribution's happening we exactly rep- retribution on this kid eye for an eye you punch our guy in the cup we try to snap your ankles yeah. All right. Now I know some people say that's high school. That's not professional. I mean, it happens to huh? a point. It happens to a point where you can get away with the NFL. I mean, you see it all. You see it all the time. They would be watching for it. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. And the first sign of it, someone's going to get kicked out of the game. But but it's a preseason game. Yeah. It's preseason. Needless to say, I think the preseason joint practice thing is good for the players. Um, when I was leaving the stadium on listening to Baltimore uh, Public Radio, whatever their version of 106.7, I think it's 104, 1.5 to 7. The fan. I think they're 105.7 up there. Yeah. Right? They said two things. One, I guess the radio up there is concerned about Lamar Jackson and his and. Uh, it's a new system, so they don't know how he's going to mesh with the new system. And I guess he's had a lot of deep ball issues so far in the off accuracy, deep deep ball accuracy so far um, mm-hmm. that what they've seen right now. But it's you know you haven't seen any real live action. Um, 
he did he had some accurate issues during the joint practice too. So that's kind of their storyline up there is is will Lamar Jackson pick it up and is will he continue to have deep ball um, accuracy issues going into the regular season? And the second thing, uh, Marlon Humphrey, who talked before uh, the practice, uh, turns out he has having surgery. He's going to be out for a month or something like that. Who, was, who was it? Marlon, Marlon Humphrey. Oh, I think yeah, one of their yeah, the DBs. Corner, yeah, the corner. Yeah, yeah. What he said was, "Yeah, we, you know, we we're using this practice as a dress rehearsal for the veterans." And as soon as he said that, I was like, "They're probably not going to play on Monday." And I was like, "Who said?" Usually, you don't hear that. Usually, the second game has been the dress rehearsal. But like we were talking about before it started, Bill, every team's doing it different. And I guess the Ravens are their dress rehearsals done. It was versus us in practice, and they're and apparently know. even matchup. Yeah, but so second point, Ron comes out finally. I think it was Thursday, mm-hmm. and names Sam Howell QB one. Yay. Sam Howell applause, is applause sound effect. starting. Oh, you want to pause down? Okay. That's laughter. <laughs> there we go. Sam Howell's name starter. I think we all knew it was coming. I don't know why he hesitated to wait, but it, is it really a competition when the backup quarterback only gets like one series throughout all of camp with the starters? Yeah. No. No. It no. was more of it again. It was Sam's job to lose. Now Sam went out there and 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 looked like piss water. Uh, you know, more on piss water later. But uh, if he had looked, you know, horrible, yeah. Th- I mean, I, and I think that was the whole plan. I kept telling people this: it's not a competition. It's a Sam. Can you show us that you can do it? Right. Can you, or are you going to fall flat on your face? If you fall flat on your face, Jacoby. You're starting. Yep. And Sam, you're going to sit and learn. If you pick this up, it's yours. You're, it's already, it's yours to lose. All right. And I just wanted, I, that's just one of those, let's make sure new offense, you know, second year in the league, and he's already on his second offensive coordinator. So let's just make sure he picks up this offense. And this is something, that, this is somebody that, you know, Eric Bienemy can work with because, hey, mm-hmm. They couldn't work with Dwayne Haskins, and I think that made him him a little gun shy as well. I I think there is something to that as well. So I just want to make sure that, okay, he's getting it. He's progressing. Let's move forward. Um, I will will tell you that I think Eric Biennium is playing a huge role in this because his presence is obvious on that practice field. It's crazy how it's he's so gravitating. Um, During the actual 11-11s, he was about – 10, 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage, calling in plays on his walkie talkies, whatever it was, talking into the headset, saying. And then Sam, each quarterback got about maybe seven plays, and then they run back to EB. And a couple times, EB was yelling at Sam because the Sam miss, either missed a read or missed a throw. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just his intensity, Eric Bandy's intensity on the field, it's it's obvious, man. It's, it's really, really cool to see. The players respect him and – um, so I'm excited, but Dev, how do you feel about Sam Howell being being named a starter? Is it just a formality? We all knew it all along, or what you think, man? Yeah, I, I think <clears throat> I think it was too much of an issue, like to even talk about in the media. I think it, I think it didn't matter. I, everybody knows he was taking 99 percent of the snaps. I think one time they said the only time uh, Brissett got in is when dude needed a drink of water. He got in. He's been taking every <laughs> first snap. Going out first and you've been playing starting both out the first preseason game, you're starting the second preseason game. I don't know why y'all had that why the fans or li- people listen to the media had to have a, an official announcement. Like, why did that matter? You know what I'm saying? Like you knew you knew who it was without him saying it. You knew who it was without him even saying it. Brissett yeah. even knew who it was. Brissett's not stupid. He knew no. who the starting quarterback was without even asking. It was never an issue. I didn't think it was ever up for grabs. I wasn't confused by Brissett or anything. I, in fact, was wondering why we signed him first day like it was the end of the world. But I don't even know. I have no idea why anyone thought this was a big deal. Who cares? We knew yeah. week one he was a starter. Who cares? Ron said he had to talk to both quarterbacks before he made the announcement. Yeah, Maybe. He, he did it right. You're not supposed to tell us where you tell yeah. them, but we all knew. Why do they keep asking? That's the real question. Why are y'all they asking this asking. guy something you know the answer to? They want to make a controversy. 
Right. You need, well, you need to click, right. you need something to click on. And likes right. and listens and that. engagement. We right. all knew that. The only thing that could throw us for a loop if we said Brissett was the starting quarterback. Then it would be like, oh, my God. Like that. But no one in the right mind that follows the team thought that was going to happen. Right. Like There was no no teller saying that it could possibly be somebody else. Yeah, it wasn't get, like it wasn't like the last few seasons where we kind of didn't know right <laughs> who might be under seven. Right, I don't I don't know. I, I mean I, I mean, we wondered, knew, I wondered, but we knew we knew someone else was late, waiting in the wings. I knew. I mean, I wonder. Hey, Taylor's going to be started quarterback by week four in Atlanta. Call I wonder it. if that just threw him. Yeah, I said that too. I wonder if they uh, just were thrown by the question. Like, is this really a question? Like, I wonder if that's what he really wanted to say. Are you is this a what, what was that one guy says? Is this a clown question? Is this real? Are you kidding me? Is this a real question? Like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I have to go home and look at the film. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I mean, I, That's the Jay Greer answer. I don't know. I'm going to have to go look at the film. Yeah, but I, it's just weird. <laughs> I, I wish I knew, like, what – I would like to ask the interviewer, the first person to ask him that that day, to, to say, to, like, why did you – what what happened to make you ask that question? Like, uh, I don't know. Dev, Dev, Bryce Harper, when he was with the National said best. That's a clown question, bro. Yeah, yeah Bryce Harper said it. It's like, is that a clown question? After Sam, Sam, Sam gets 99.9% of the snaps. Wrong. Right. Is, Every practice. <laughs> is Sam Howell the starting quarterback? Are you kidding me? Talk yeah. Him, Give him with the, hit him with the Stephen A. Smith. Come on, man. Okay. Like, like, like Westbrook. You know? So, like... so, Dev, I'll go back to you. Same question as last week. So, this is game two. Uh, Phil had already told us up front that Baltimore said they're not playing their starters. I'm guessing that's for both sides, Phil, I'm assuming. From what I understand. Uh, so with that being said, Dev, how many series do you want to see Sam Howell play? What do you want to see again from um, our starters? I want to see, I'd like to see a successful two drives uh, uh, in a row to start off. I don't need any more late finishes and making them play in a second. Just give me two no. back-to-back successful drives. And they could be field goals. Or you know somebody just dropping one like uh like base did I call that a successful drive we don't anticipate that's something that's a recurring thing unless he's the one that drops it again throw it back to yeah. him again you know but I, I like to see two successful drives hopefully you're getting out there by the second quarter or middle of the first I hope you get two good drives out of them um both sides of the ball really I mean I think the second team I think the defense only needs to go one period like yeah. you know but so for I think you the it's, offensive it's, line, it's... You're you're it's conditions based, yeah. Not I time think based, that, right? I think that we definitely need to see uh, how get more uh, more quarters or more more drives under him. But you can't leave him out there without the starting offensive line. I think that would be flagrant to do. So I like to see that unit work. Maybe you can run to some second receivers. Uh, you know, uh, Dayami and 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 Kaz and what's the tall joint? The big tall dude we got there now, Kemp. Uh, Kemp. I like to see those guys get some Tinsley, like those guys get more clock, maybe. But as far as the offensive line, uh, maybe Robinson a little bit, and uh, and the quarterback they should have to play like at least two drives, man. All right. If not Phil, the first quarter, they're not successful. What do you think, Phil? I uh, I would like to see three three drives, I, I, I'm, I with at least two scores. You know, I want to see you know, whether it be you know a touchdown, a field goal, two touchdowns, whatever. We need to get in the end zone. One of those drives, you know, oh, we did it. on Sam's third drive last time. I like to see a little more of that. You're playing against their two, supposedly. We'll see if they hold to that, but I don't know if it's their twos because those guys that are out might not be playing week one. You know what I'm saying? So the guys that they have in there, like Humphrey, might not be there week one. So, so the guy that's playing behind him is he not going to play? Supposedly, it's going to be their backups. Their twos are going to be starting. If so, burn them. You know, uh, just get up to an early lead. Keep the pedal going down. Osaka, these dudes. Yeah, yeah. Y'all the know streak the stops reference. Twenty four. The streak stops you know, at twenty four. I, I just I, th- this way. You know, I want Sam to look good. It gives the team a lot of confidence moving forward. You know, when you run over somebody's backups uh, for a couple of drives. And then uh, go ahead and just just take away this stupid preseason win streak that has Ugh. suddenly become a topic of conversation. Nobody cared about that until this week. 
And now they've got what twenty five preseason wins in a row. I know. Good I mean, job. they say they say preseason doesn't matter, but I guess at some point when you have twenty five in a row, that's kind of cool. I don't know what it really means, especially if you're starting. Hasn't translated the shit during the regular season. Yeah, but it, no one else can say that. I guess I should. I remember a couple of times that the Redskins at the time, or we went four and zero in the preseason. Three, you know, we were just. I have Spurrier. Taken, we I have taken a resort. dump forty-seven days in a row. Is that amazing? Uh, that's pretty normal. I, th- I okay. think that they, I think that they are. Uh, I was winning the game, win a game once that Super Bowl, don't right? count. Yeah, but it's twenty-five. You got to acknowledge that's <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah. If you go back and look, you want some? Go back and look at the preseason records of every Super Bowl championship team we had. Oh, some of them are lose all of them. Yeah, yes. hey, yeah. it doesn't mean anything. That's what I'm saying. But Gibbs, just... Gibbs would Gibbs would take that team into the preseason with like ten plays in the playbook installed. Yeah, like that's all they called. They had like six run, six passes, and four runs. You know, and you're only running these. Well, hold <laughs> yeah. on. You, there's only so many runs you can do. They're just different formations. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's how you get to them. You can only run. So many runs, you know, sweep. Many times you can, stretch, you know, many different ways. That's not belly. necessarily true. You know, many different ways you can run. Yeah, but there's only like, there's only like, there's only like eight. Alone. But as far as the run itself, you can block it different ways, but still, it's still a, you know, a dive, a, run. a sweep, <laughs> a stretch, a dive, a sweep, a stretch. You know, you just got to block it different. Belly trap, you know, zone. It's all, it's all you know, the same stuff. Yeah. I get what you're saying, but you know, like counter gap right. alone, there's about nine different variations. It's like eight routes in the whole league. Some shit. Well, me, me personally, yeah. I I would like to see once again. I know Sam's Q one, but I I think he needs reps, man. At a minimum, a full first quarter. Mine's time based, not drive successful drive. But a full first quarter and maybe five to six minutes into the second quarter. Then you can swap out whoever needs to swap out. So 15, 20 minutes of total play, regardless of whether they're on offense or not. It, but you can't – the thing, though, you you can't start – I think it was you who said it, you cannot start like you did last week. You just I cannot. See, I want to see Cosme play uh, a whole, like, three or four drives without having to it off the field. He did. Cosby looked great. He played, he, had seven, a, he played seven snaps, bro. He didn't get injured. No, no, I don't know. Not that old, but I want to see him play a whole quarter without limping off the field. Man. That's uh, Vidarian Mathis. I think he got injured on the first. Yeah, him too. him too. Him too. I like to see all the second round picks make a play tomorrow, man. That's Cosby. Cosby that's be fine. that's Mathis. Cosby. That's that's uh that's a uh, uh, Quan. Yeah, that's Quan Cosme and Mathis. I want to see those three guys playing into the. You know what's funny, Dad, went to the second I, half. I'm with you on the second round picks, and I'm I'm hoping Cosme and Quan can change that mantra, right? But I was out of curiosity yesterday. I was sitting on the couch, and I was like, "Let me just go back and look at the second round picks." Do you know who it our last? Pretty. Do you know who our last really good second yeah, round pick was? Preston Smith. Yeah, Preston. Okay, Preston Smith. I I I count him, but he's more okay. He's better I'll, for we'll Green count Bay. Him. He's better for Green the next, Bay. The next one before him, 2002, Liddell Betts. He wasn't even really that good. He was good. He here, wasn't that like good, but year. he wasn't a failure. He was a contributor, and he was relatively healthy. And then before that, it was Fred Smoot the year prior. Liddell Betts. Liddell Betts is is a is a case of he never got a chance. Let's let. let I look. think he started one year with clear clear cut starter, but it wasn't even like it was because Portis got hurt. There you go. It was un, it was unfortunate circumstances. Well, he ran for a second round pick at running back when you got Portis though. Sure. Back well, hold on. No. It's even worse for Liddell Betts. I, I, because I, here's the thing shout out to a bunch of creators on YouTube who have dropped tons of games from the 2000s, like full games just in the past week or two weeks or so. So I've really been going back and watching like a lot of the Spurrier days, the, the Gibbs 2.0 games. Poor Liddell Betts. <laughs> He comes into this this team, second round pick. He's backing up Stephen Davis and Kenny Watson, who Spurrier loved. Then we go out and get Trung freaking candidate. Trung candidate. He was on a good right. 
because he was good in St. Louis, and we thought, oh, we're going to run this passing yeah, offense. Louis, yeah. We need a passing offense running back. And then Gibbs is like, I want a absolute stud running back. I'm going to trade Champ Bailey for Clinton Portis. Yes, because that's such a smart thing to do. Well, I think, well, I think, I think Champ might not have been coming back. No, here's the thing. I'll be honest with you on that one. And we also, we traded Champ and a second round pick, which Dev would have appreciated getting rid of that, Man. for Portis. Now, let's be real. Portis had not gotten hurt the last couple of years, probably on his way to a Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Yeah. At the, at the time, no wonder back had done what he'd done at that point. And when was not, at that, not in a at long that, time. At that exact point, when we traded for Portis, Portis was the better of the two, in most people's opinion. At that, remember point. what he did on his first play as a Redskin? Yeah, sixty-six yard yeah, touchdown, yeah, and yeah. he was one of the best block pass blocking running backs. He was the best. Seen. He was definitely. He might have been the best rookie running back. And I think he at that point. his body paid for it as well. Unfortunately, that's why he put on weight. He got a little yeah, sore, but he put Coach on Gibbs weight. Turned to him into a pounding. Coach, yeah. uh, Coach Gibbs turned him into a power back, man. Yep. And he did good at it. Yeah, yeah. but it fucked his body up. Yeah, but he was smart because he was 210 in Denver. He was 220, 225 here. He put on the extra size to take the pounding. Say what you want about Clinton Portis. Smart. You knew yeah. you are going to a power running Plus, system. You better get hurt. yourself a little beefed up. Plus, he only got yeah. hurt uh, chasing people down after a turnover or a fumble. He never got hurt <laughs> on offense. That's what's quiet about it. He Jason but, Campbell, somebody throws anyway, interception, he Liddell got hurt. Betts, or somebody fumble, he got hurt. Poor, poor Liddell Betts had to had to sit in all those different, you know, weird situations, and he did have that thousand yard year. Poor just got hurt like week five, so uh, in eleven weeks he got you know yeah. most of his yards. He had some yeah. yards before because he was he backed up uh, Porters directly. Right. But I always felt that you know Liddell Betts could have been. Good enough that if we had kept Champ Bailey, I don't might have been able to roll with bets. But I don't think anyone knew for sure at the time. Right. Big investment. Well, going into tomorrow's game, the team, say what you want about depth charts. They have updated their depth chart. Uh, let's show the one on offense here real quick. And I'll never I have a, ever since Jay Gruden told me about the depth chart one year and the reporters kept asking about the depth chart, the depth chart. He's like, yeah, I did one. Actually, I didn't do it. I had the equipment guy do it because we had to do one. So I just told him to make one. And that's, that's what he did. So I don't know if that's true or not. I think I it's see, hilarious. I'm looking at the depth chart now. I see the new he one. Didn't, he, it, it, it's because he was probably too drunk to do it himself. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Um, Sorry. Let me pause here for a second. That's the soundboard. Um, let me pull up the depth chart we have. Um, not too shocking here. Hold up, where to go? Where did it go? Where there it is. All right, let's try this again. Okay. Ow, oh, did it work? Technical difficulties here, people. Technical difficulties. All right, I know why I didn't. Work. Yes. All right. Here we go. We good now. That was my technical yeah. difficulty music. Yes. Okay, the offense. So I'll just for the for the audio podcast crew. Nothing changing at quarterback. Hal Brissett from uh, running back Brian Robinson, Chris Rodriguez Jr., Derek Gore, and they have Antonio Gallon. Excuse me, Antonio Gibson listed as the third round. Excuse me, third down running back. Chris Rodriguez is going to make this team. I think he's going to unseat Jonathan Williams personally. That dude, oh, yeah, Chris, yeah. Yeah, man, Chris Rod, Patterson, God, we Rod. might just keep those two and uh, Gibson along with our Alex Armia, Arma. What was it? Yeah, uh, tight end. They got Logan Thomas still at tight end one, Cole Turner two, John Bates three, Curtis Hodges four. Receivers, no question. McLaurin, Samuel Dotson, Brown. Uh, I think Brian Pringle is going to get the fifth spot personally. Yeah, uh, and you still got Dax Milne and Kemp. Dax Milne's Kemp. on the IR today. Is he okay? Um, I think I was in spaces with, with the spaces fellas uh, last week and I was talking about Kemp and <laughs> I don't know who said it, but someone says, man, Kemp is Maurice Harris 2.0. <laughs> I was like, that's probably not a bad comment. Marco Mitchell. 
the Mo Harris made some great preseason he's plays. Huge, man, he's a big dude. He's he's dude. There's no one else on person, a team like that. Yeah, he's even bigger in person. Yeah, oh there's no one gosh. else on a team like that. Yeah, he's like it's like a Sims. He it kept him on the team. His size and physical presence oh, alone goodness. kept him on the team. I, yeah, I wonder, man. I I guess probably next week we're gonna get into more roster podcasts. Yeah, we'll but probably it, have to it's do. It's gonna a be interesting that that, that that they can take some away from tight ends since. Basically, Logan Turner and Bates will be there, and you probably could put Bates, uh, Thomas on pup. So yeah, if he's uh, not it, ready, right? So like, I think that, that Armani uh, Rogers getting hurt opened a spot for either Alex uh, Arma or another wide receiver. I think it did. Now another thing we could go crazy is we keep an extra lineman. Yeah. So so like I said, someone's going to get that last spot. It could be it's either going to be Mason Brooks. Uh, Marcus Kemp, maybe. I can I can see it happening, man. I can yeah. see Marcus McKay or or Alex Armour. I think those those guys could make it. I don't think Tisley makes it. I think you could maybe sneak him on practice squad. But Marcus Kemp, I don't think you're ready to sneak him on there. It's too big, man. Somebody will take right. a flyer. Yeah. The starting line, uh, center Nick Gates, right guard Sam Cosby, right tackle Andrew Wiley. No surprise there. Left guard Chris Paul. Left tackle Charles Leno. So the left guard position is a little interesting. I thought Sadiq was going to get it, but Paul was making some some headways. If you're taking this depth chart, you know, literally. I got I got a question. Why are they keep putting Ricky Stromberg at third string center when they all know he's going to make the team? They all know he's going to make the team. Why do you keep putting him under Larson? Is that just a motivational tactic, or are they just? Yeah, really- I I'm with you. I was looking for Ricky Stromberg to be out there with. The twos and the, but they, they were putting between the twos and the threes at the practice. I think it's, I wanted to see more Ricky Stromberg. I think the dude looks. I, think, I, I want to I see him play. There's absolutely no way they cut him, and and you don't keep three centers. Like there's no way you keep three centers. It's, no. That's what I'm trying to. Stromberg can play guard. I understand that, but that means you're keeping like four guards too. That's what I'm trying to say, man. Like there's no way three guys even remotely could play centers making this team. One has got this. Ab- Lars, after Lars last down. year, after last year. I'm not taking chances. Man, you think they keep three Give me centers? some line depth. Well, then who's going to be gone at guard? I get, Like I said, next week is when we do that. So. Laufenberg's going to be gone for sure. Yeah, Laufenberg's right gone. There. And Alex, uh, Kimba. And you Lulu. put Stromberg on the practice squad. I don't know what Braden Daniels ever has done. He's um, a rookie just like Stromberg, so I guess I don't know. Yeah, that I, don't, I, haven't seen it. I haven't seen him in a game, though. Like, right. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't remember seeing him in a game. Yeah. Cornelius Lucas is probably the swing. You don't need yep. to keep four tackles. I feel like Cosme, Cosme can play tackle in emergency. So he can. You can keep four tackles. And so I don't can, know. Uh, it's, it's Lucas, weird... Lucas yeah. can play both sides. So can Caden Smith, they said. Hell, honestly. So, yeah. Out of curiosity, what are these numbers next to some of these players? So I was trying to figure that out. I'm not really sure. This is off of Hogs Haven. That's no key. No, the the only key they give is for um, the colors. So colors. green's clear starter, light green's borderline starter. Like the the yellow is backup. The bay or the peach is like bubble practice squad, and teal is draft pick, and pink is undrafted free agents. Oh, the numbers that appear besides some players' oh, names for the twenty twenty three uh, cap hits over the caps. So oh, okay, like okay, okay, okay. X million dollars. Yeah, so so Curtis Gibson's three point zero three million dollars against the cap. So it's probably a good way to count the uh, fifty two. Uh, while we're at it, let's let's just roll right over to the um defense. the defense here, um, since we're going along the lines of looking at these depth what charts. Over there, dude? Uh, it's just vape. This is too. <laughs> <laughs> See, you got me in between things, and I couldn't even get to the soundboard on time to, to hit the funny sound. Oh, well, I'll just keep going. All right, let's go into the defensive here. Defensive. Defense. 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 There you go. So we'll start on the defensive line. No questions here. Four first-round picks. Chase Young, Deron Payne, John Allen, and Montez Sweat. With four first-rounders on your – front four you should be dominating linebackers jamin davis and cody barton cornerbacks kendall fuller emmanuel forbes and then uh, benjamin st juiced as the slot nickel and the safeties Derek force cam curl so no 
surprises from yeah, the starting yeah. perspective. Oh, okay. From starters. Okay. It's the backups that you know you you're starting to see some a, a little bit of people moving around. I don't know how you're going to get Percy Butler playing time. How you're going to get Quan Martin playing time? How you going to get um, you know Reeves? You know how you get them playing time? They earned their playing time. Well, Percy Butler's a uh, Percy Butler's a backup free safety. He'll play on on a uh, sub packages. But the thing is, Quan Martin's like third slot behind uh, Wild Goose. Like, what the fuck is going on, man? And I don't need that from a second round. I want a, to me a second round picture. It's just, well, it's that's, just, all, it's, that's that's a hog's haven. That's no, a hog's this, haven. Okay. this is the official one leaked by the team, right? No, uh, well, well, they just let posted me, it. Let, I let me, it. Let me let me let me let me let me. We need to get a hog haven on the podcast, man. That's what dudes, anyways. They need it. Uh, I don't know if it says who this could be. I don't know if this is their their assessment. Oh, nope. Please note these assigned positions and colors are my own personal opinions. So there you go. This is an opinion piece. All right. But it still gives us at, a frame of hold on, hold on. Quan is. They have him as the third. Back, they have him, but they have him as a backup free safety on ESPN ahead of Percy Butler. Ooh. Percy Butler was a what fourth round pick? Yeah, but they, they go base four threes. They have David Mayo as a star. So yeah. But I'm who I'm excited to see two people really is Ridgeway and Obata. Those guys are really good. We have some depth on the defensive line. I love Ridgeway and I love Obata. I'm so excited to watch both of them play. I love FA Obata. His efficiency rates are crazy. Like what he does when he gets limited playing snaps is insane. Yeah, but okay, so Smith Williams. Our right? lads, no. our our lads has an a, a depth chart updated as of six twenty five p.m. Sunday, August twentieth. Oh, and say. they have Quan as the backup nickelback to Benjamin St. Juice over Wild Goose. Danny Ooh. Johnson making two point two nine million dollars. So. Yeah, he's injured now. Yeah, he's I, I told you I saw a wild goose jersey at Ravens Ravens practice. I saw that. It was crazy. Wild been... goose jersey. His mama. <laughs> His mama that that, that dude did not look anything like Rashad Wild Goose. Hey, Maybe this jersey was just on 20, sale. This is twenty twenty three, man. It could have been. I guess anything's possible, right? <laughs> could have been his mama. You never know. So that's the depth day. chart heading, heading into the game tomorrow. Uh, finally, want to close out with a, with two more quick topics. So. Amongst the among the action of all the preseason joint practices and stuff, uh, last week the Commanders also announced that they are partnering back up with Anheuser Busch. So this is not a new relationship. This is a relationship that used to exist, and I think they dropped us, and now the team is back underneath Anheuser Busch as the team's exclusive beer partner. So we'll so now pass we blue went, ribbon. PBR. Yeah, I don't know if we went one year or two years without a official beer sponsor, but it's always been Bud Light. So for them to do that to come back, and they they probably can just go back to reusing all the same old old shit they used and, to use. And, and like we were trying to tell everybody on a couple podcasts ago, the reason we changed from Redskins wasn't really because it was deemed as racist. It was because the sponsorships pulled the fuck out. And yeah. you see how they came back. Once we got a new owner, we're no longer the Redskins. So that's why we're not going back to Redskins, brother, because sponsorships won't stay. They're afraid yeah. of public opinion, man. You might not be. You might not give a shit what somebody else thinks. But the people who are collecting checks from the name do give a fuck. Yeah. So um, check out some of this thing that they're already sponsoring. So the season kickoff party, party presented by Bud Light. They're also doing the Bud Light Easy to Summer Concert Series next year, giving making way to some of the biggest artists around the world. I'm performing there, field. dog. I'm performing there. Don't let it. Let's <laughs> they drink all my well, they they clearly they messed up uh, the Beyonce concert or the weather did, but uh, mm. they're also going to have the Bud Light backyard inside the Legends Plaza on game days. So before then, the Bud I don't Light know if backyard. I want to. I don't know if I want to do a Bud Light backyard, man. They got like dudes and don't ladies. Say. You know what I'm saying? They got the trans like backyard bash, man. That's not where I want to. Oh, no, nah, we're shocking, good. Shocking content. 
Uh, the Bud Light end zone will be a, serve as a gathering place for 21 and over fans to grab a beer and cheer on the team from the main concourse. They've always had that. That's always been a hot spot. That's always been the link up spot for friends in the middle of a I'm game. Sorry, that Bud Light oh, so if you want, if you want to have a trans light and play in somebody's backyard, show up there in, the, in their end zone. Right. Yeah. Go deep. Go deep, dog. They'll hit you right over the middle. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Right through the A gap. All right. Here we are. In, in all seriousness, I really couldn't care about any of this stuff but like I mean, you know I don't drink beer. So the, the, a, a bunch of a, a bunch of angry nagas uh yes. have a problem with it. Naga please. Naga please. Yeah. Um Really Talk about but, exposing yourself. Pause. Yeah. Um, we have Bud Light now, so who I, cares? Here's, here's the beer. thing. Here, here's the thing. A, if you're going to drink that much beer at the stadium, you're doing it all wrong. Secondly, you probably you might see me with a Bud Light lime because that's the only way I'll drink Bud Light because Bud Light to me is the worst of the domestic lights by far. I'm a Miller Lite guy. I always have been. I was a Miller Lite guy in my day. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I will drink. Kind of like, I will drink Miller Coors Light. I will, Bud Light just doesn't do it for me. Like I, I drink it, I'm like, ugh, this is just shit. It's nasty. But in all honesty, I don't care. I'm doing my drinking out in the tailgate area, right? I may grab one to start the game, get a big tall boy, you know, one of those big missile silos, and you know, have that kind of keep my buzz going through the third quarter. But I'm I'm well, not good. buying tons of beer at the stadium. And if they have other options, which they do, they keep a lot of like the local bruises up. I'll probably get one of those because it tastes better than Bud Light. Somebody gonna bring a dispensary up in one and one for us one day. That's when the real money's gonna come in. Somebody's <laughs> gonna put a dispensary in a legal city, that's, man. That's when Dev will make the flight over right to into, DC. Man, yeah. I'm looking at the Atlanta game, man. It's the 15th October. We yeah, looked at I tickets think, today. I think uh, we'll be able to see That's Heineke far by then. Away. Yeah, to see Heineke and uh, the Washington uh, Commanders. It'd just be a, a moxie, a moxie fest, dude. If I go, moxie I might get me. I might get me an Atlanta. Uh, I might get me an Atlanta Heineke jersey, man. I you thought about what? it. That'd be pretty. That'd be pretty dope. Because be. the color, gotta, the color scheme is is already pretty cool. Yeah. Man, I, I might give me a Heineke Atlanta jersey, man. Just to rep the dude. Man. Well, think I'm of that. Right. What think of a, a match at Heineke versus Al? Look at all that moxie on the field. Moxie be, bowl. The moxie what say, bowl. What, what do we say for it? It would just be like skeet white on white crime. Skeet, skeet and moxie all over the field. <laughs> <laughs> white on white crime everywhere. You know, if, uh, if, let me tell you something. If we had a facing Taylor Heineke, the battle with a pigment league challenge. Is He's probably a good thing. Mode. It's a good thing for Heineke's existence that I am not the defensive coordinator. You know, it'd be sponsored by Lowe's too. That's the type of company that <laughs> has moxie well, people. Speaking of Atlanta, there was an article that came out, and I'll, I'll props to Atlanta for doing this because you know, ever since they opened the new stadium, their food prices are like 1960s. No, no, no. The article said, "Here's the here's the amount of food you could get for thirty two dollars. I think it was thirty two. At whatever their new stadium, yeah, they know I mean, it was a, an a entire spread of they, food. No, their hot dogs a, are like a dollar, Dev. They're like they know that uh, there's a restaurant at every corner in Atlanta. You can just eat before you come in there, and they losing money. Maybe. I mean, have you ever been to Atlanta? Every street's got a restaurant and a nice one, not like, like yeah. a McDonald's. They got like <laughs> some dope shit. Well, and there, there's one more corporate partnership. So this was the actual first official partnership since the new ownership came on. Is Verizon? Five staff condoms. <laughs> Hustle, mag <No>. Hustle magazine. <laughs> yeah. So the commanders are now partnered with Verizon. And what Verizon is going to do starting in 2024. So I don't know if it's fiscal year or calendar year or season 2024. It just says 2024. It's going to be the official 5G network of the Washington commanders. Uh, what they're going to do is help commanders. Uh, fans improve the experience at fedex field for players and coaches uh, they're sure. going to provide technology solutions that will improve the experience on and off the field and have reliable communications for game day operations personnel so i'm guessing they're probably going to upgrade the wi-fi we gonna... upgrade a fan's wi-fi i hate standing outside the stadium waiting for Ticketmaster to load so i can get my shit scanned 
so I don't sit out there and miss the first two drives of the game. Why don't you just why don't you just like like screenshot your ticket before you roll up there? That way ah, the they got that thing now where you can't do that. Yeah, I think you have to have the app open, Ticketmaster app. Yeah, Ticketmaster, if you screenshot it, it will T-Mo- not scan. T-Mobile has this little box you can carry that gives you free Wi-Fi everywhere. You know, yeah, everybody used to laugh oh, when you had fuck. T-Mobile now, but now T-Mobile's got more internet service than anybody. So you know, I got T-Mobile. I don't know if y'all watching this T-Mobile, think- y'all can sponsor me. I, I have T-Mobile. T-Mobile, but if y'all want to give me an iPhone 15, I'm happy to switch. I I have T-Mobile, right? Yeah. T-Mobile is great where I live. Yeah, T-Mobile works everywhere now, though. Back then, it, it was is trash. trash. In the DC yeah. here. It no, here's the weird thing. It's great in DC. It sucks in Northern Virginia and it sucks in PG County. And I Nobody don't know why, other than I think Verizon just monopolizes all the suburban towers. Probably. But nobody lives there except uh, the great whites of West Virginia, though. They don't have cell phones. <laughs> or well, I will tell you I, on oh, for the on the uh, at least on the Ticketmaster app on your iPhone, it says we recommend you put this in Apple Wallet. Whoa. To avoid network disruptions oh. when you're trying to enter your thing, so I, I don't know if uh, Guess who doesn't have an Apple phone. At well, all? no, no, no. Does does, does um, you have a Samsung? Does Samsung have like an equivalent version of storing like I don't know, digital wallet or something? Yeah, um, so that's what I do. They, they just can't be bothered that. to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, lastly, with Verizon, they're going to be sponsoring the annual military base practice. On they're doing it at a Joint Base Andrews on August 25th this week. Um, so fans will military members will have uh, the opportunity to watch practice on the sidelines, connect with players. That's always a good time, but that will be managed or excuse me, sponsored by Verizon this year. So, um, and they're also going to deploy a managed private wireless solution at the field across and across 29 other NFL stadiums. So they What's must be mean? just up in the Wi-Fi. So this is this solution includes full support for coach to coach communications on the field and provides the NFL with speed, security and reliability for critical on field coach to coach communications. So it's probably the refs communications, the coaches communications, it's probably anything related to commissions on the communication on the field. It looks like Verizon owns that across the NFL. Well, 29. So FedEx field and 29. So there's two stadiums. They're not doing it in. Now I want to know what two stadiums are doing it. <laughs> probably Texas because Jerry Jones is a dick, but I, I don't know. I'm curious where they're not. Where are where are they not going to be privatized? But either way, uh, fellas, we got football tomorrow, 8 p.m. kickoff, starting. I don't know. I think pregame probably starts at 7:30, give or take. So 6:30 Central. 6:30 Central. Yes, for those not on the East Coast, because not everyone is on the East Coast. Those are the coolest parts of the country. Yes. Where the real niggas live. I I mean, we're talking about cool. The weather's actually been very nice over here the last few days. I I will say, highs in the the 80s, it's been, summer's almost over. It's going to be 110 heat day next year tomorrow. Oh, my God. And now, is that with humidity? I don't know whatever heat humidity. index means. I'm, I'm not a meteorologist. You know what I'm well, I mean, it, is is it humid where you are? Or is it just? It's hot as fuck. Hot, like like AM. muggy, hot, like yeah, swamp yeah, ass yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. got a lot of humidity. Because in Texas, hot. it can be 110, and honestly, it's not that bad because it's like hair dryer hot. It's just hot air, no humidity. Not Houston, but I mean, in other parts of Texas. I mean, it's supposed to be 93 tomorrow where I'm at. It's gonna be in the 80s until What's Friday. It'll be 96. What's your heat index, Well, I don't know. Um, I haven't looked at that. It's gonna be hot as shit. Hot as balls. One forest fire is made by the government. Just joking. I don't believe in that controversy. But <laughs> you've seen and the movie tomorrow, The Poor. Yeah. Humidity 53. It's gonna Destiny. be pretty warm. More DARPA. Uh, Weather changes and controlling shit. Controlling tsunamis and yeah. lightning and I had a, I had a conversation with believe, a guy who didn't you know. You believe that. in the conspiracy of the harp program like Jesse the Body Ventura does. That sounds exactly like Jesse the Body Ventura, Jesse by the way. The I'm not gonna lie to you. That sounds exactly like anyone from Minnesota, to be honest, but specifically Jesse the Body Ventura. I mean. I should know I was in the Navy. I was a frogman for four years in Vietnam. You know he was in the movie The Running Man, but you also couldn't beat Paul Orndorff. Yeah, he was. Uh, what was it? Match. Captain um, 
Insane. He's the exercise guy. What was it? Captain yes. um Captain Freedom. Captain Freedom. I won't do it. <laughs> Has that armor on you? He doesn't yeah. want to fake the match at the end. He takes the I won't do it. <laughs> ben Richards was was Arnold Schwarzenegger in that movie. Ben Richards, the butcher of Bakersfield. The That's butcher. who he was. The butcher. Yeah. Good movie, Running Man. I haven't seen that in forever. I ain't got time to bleed. Total Recall, the girl with the three titties. Remember that? That's the only part I remember. <laughs> Why is it whenever we talk about Arnold, eventually the three yeah, titty girl? Three titties, yo, every time. Guato. I think we should give it three titties. Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got four kids to feed, man. Benny. Cat driver <laughs> Benny. <laughs> oh, it's like you have four kids and three titties. That's just what you call it. Conundrum. <laughs> <laughs> Alina. Oh man. All right, fellas. Tomorrow night. Be on the lookout for the live game thread over in the Washington Football Addicts Facebook group. If you haven't joined, please join. That's where that's the official podcast Facebook group. And our official sponsor, because our last official sponsor bellied up and dropped everyone at the same time. So yeah. <laughs> uh, at least we got paid once. We got once. one payout. Got yeah, one payout. So it's cool though. It's, I'm it's over, cool. I'm, I'm we went there. We went there and got them canceled, man. Yes. <laughs> whatever. Because that's off. what we do. Yeah, we got y'all canceled. Crab cakes and football, baby. That's what Command Podcast does. Command oh yeah, football. one more thing. Y'all want to talk about watching more football? Andrews. You're a bitch. I'm gonna drop you. 30 feet below the Gulf of Tonkin. I picked you up fantasy football injuries, so don't don't get hurt. I tried to get I him. used to. I used to pick him. I'm not doing it this year. Man, I'm I got a dope team. I really didn't get Mark Andrews, but I'm going to tell y'all my team I got in our league here, man. I got I got Hurts and Jackson, son. Oh, nice. I picked up Brian Robinson, too, by the way, and Taylor. I have zero. I will pick. I have no emotion when it comes to fantasy football. I will, I will bench players who are playing the command. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I do too. I, I just figured that he's at like I got him I real late. I get a football. starting running back real late. That's a win. Yeah, their value's dropping. So unless you're one of the big three or four, you can get mad depth later. So yeah. All right, fellas. Any shout outs before we close it down? Phil, you got anything? Um, shout out to uh, Deron Payne because uh, he was ready to fight. During that practice, Rob has slowly become my favorite player on the team, bro. Oh, the dude is just—he's a unit, man. He's—he's. He I mean, he really has become that dude. Yeah, that's awesome. Speaking of a, a, a big dude, Dev, real quick. Kyle Hamilton, the dude looks so good on the field. Yeah, I'm so mad. I about feel this like deal, if this man. was live, if it was live play, he would have laid out at least four dudes. I'm yeah, talking I, Sean Taylor, I, and he wanted to too. You could just tell, like during seven on sevens, eleven on elevens, he was stalking people, and I was like, "We got a guy like that too, man." On the other side. Like, <laughs> whatever. I accidentally hit that button. I wasn't there. Derek Forrest. <laughs> Dev over here trying to get a point off. off. Yeah, <laughs> hit the credits. <laughs> I was like, whoa, whatever. Yeah. Derek, uh, hey, Derek actually, Wilson I got Wilson. one. Shout out, shout out to Chris Sims. Mm. Oh, yeah. Has to couch all positive praise for anything with this team with some sort of negativity. Why? Well, I don't think that uh, uh, Sam Howe, he doesn't have the ability to adjust the angle of his arm throws. And, and, and that's why he's not going to be an elite quarterback. The very next couple of days, what we see. How side arming uh, passes side arming different and everything yeah. else. Try again, Chris. My homes ran. Really my homes ran. To, Washington. My homes today Just ran out of bounds. Come at Daddy. Your overrated dumbass should never be in the Hall of anything except the Hall of Average and Carried. That was All your father, them. and that was you. And you want to sit there and criticize our quarterback? Yeah, and come up 20, with since twenty nineteen though. Sims has shown a lot of love since 2019 to this team in random yeah, yeah. spots. No, he's talking about Chris Louisville. You can't talk about Louisville. It's Louisville. Surprisingly, Chris he Sims. comes out with some crazy. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. He's, he's a Louisville what? guy, man. 
But hey, I tell you what though. You can go back I saw my homes, my yeah. homes today jumped out of bounds, five feet out of bounds, right? And threw I the ball it. right directly to a dude hit him in his hands and dropped it. Like he jumped it out of bounds, him. man. He was behind him. But he was getting pushed out of bounds too. As yeah. midair, he was getting pushed out of yeah, bounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it would have been a tough catch, but We've seen Harold do very similar things in his camp. But I was just saying that that's, that's and, a different animal, man. Chris Sims shows you know, the natural like love. Chris Sims shows, like, yes, our quarterback play the last couple of years has been bad. But it's like you would think that we put, uh, uh, you know, little Jimmy from, from the hospital in his wheelchair back there, the way he talks about our quarterbacks. And it's like, dude, easy. It's yeah. different. Be objective. He was all over uh Quan Martin, the pick. I guess he was like Quan Martin's number one fan. He couldn't stop, he wouldn't shut up about Quan Martin. And he's he says we got the best safety in the draft. I do remember that. Yeah. Uh, come out of April. So he but our he quarterback some... is gonna be asked because he doesn't throw the ball like Patrick Mahomes does in all in, in 360 degrees of angles. Yeah. Carl Martin, really? man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a Carl Martin fan because I want the second down round of Jinx to, to stop, man. So Quan, Mathis, Cosby, man, y'all gotta turn it around, bro. We got any other go. second round picks on the team? Let's go. Faith in Cosby, I think. He's do, we have, do we have any other second round picks on the team? I don't think so. All right. I don't think so. If right, we do, it could be up. from from transfers or free agents, but yeah. in house ones, no. You, you named them all. Yeah, we so, need to we need to get this going, man. Time for a change. And you Great know what we should do hurt. after Tuesday's game, if we can find something, maybe we'll give out a uh Glock Dookie Glock Award. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. It Wiley has... should have got Wiley should have got the last one. Who? Wiley. Andrew Wiley. Wiley. <laughs> <laughs> for the safety. And the sack before that. Andrew Wiley, you get the Glock. <laughs> I think that's demonetizing in itself just because. Yeah, yeah, turn dancing around with a gun. It's not even the dookie part. That's the worst part, YouTube. <laughs> but you know what? You'll never get away from it because you'll you'll get you'll get stuff like this, man. Dev will Dev will give you the, the brown stuff on your face if you deserve it. And you will you will you will get it. Good, bad, and different. It doesn't matter who you are. Don't matter. Everyone's fair game. Everyone can get a Glock Dookie. <laughs> Even us, man. We gave it to Shotguns. Shotguns got a Glock Dookie. Shotguns got a Glock Dookie. <laughs> Remember, because he he uh, had he's a blown out by Green victory. Bay. Yes. <laughs> you sir. Yeah. But he does kick our ass. You sir have won a Glock Dookie. <laughs> <laughs> Still funny. Still funny. <laughs> All right, we're cutting this down. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can find us on any of your audio, audio podcast platforms. This is always a fun to play back on the audio. Uh, so we'll be back next Thursday for a post-game Ravens chat and probably a pre-game Bengals chat all mashed up into one. So thank you for tuning in. We appreciate the love. As always, peace. Peace in the Middle East. And hail. Now we're out.